So there are lots of items and things you'll want to unlock early in the Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. In this video, we'll take a look at the best early gear, hidden powers and a few tricks to get them even earlier than the usual. If you end up finding this video useful, a like would help a ton and let's dive right in. Starting things off, don't miss out on the archaic warm greaves that you can grab from a treasure on the starting Sky Island very early. At one point, you have to reach the Gutenbach Shrine in the snowy peaks of the island to the east, where you will get the Ascend power. However, once you're done with that shrine, from the entrance, take it to the right side up until you see this suspended platform atop of you that leads to a path above. Once you're here, just use Ascend power to reach that place and then you will find a chest on your right between these routes. And this is already great because it makes navigating cold areas a lot easier without having to constantly cook meals. This pair alone will last you quite a lot and only the coldest regions will require extra resistance, so a great way to not have to deal with that for a long time. At number 2, as soon as you hit the Hyrule Fields, go ahead and grab yourself a horse. Yeah, the game does make us do that once again. You will want to reach the new Serene Stables just a bit up to the northwest, since you also find some good breeds on your way over there. And the best part is that the first horse registration is completely free of charge, so do not waste that opportunity early on, make sure you grab one that has really good stats and high stamina. Just like in the previous game, solid color horses always have the higher ones, while the spotted ones are generally much weaker. For me, the ones that were spawning around the stables in that area were all spotted, but there is one not too far off that spawned multiple purebreds. That area is right here just outside of the Susuyai Shrine, which is great because it's exactly on your way towards those stables. So you can quickly grab one and then register them right at the Serene Stables. However, there's a new mechanic added, also called Pony Points, where any registration or usage of the stable also rewards extra points to you. As you collect more of them, you can then give them at this ledger inside and get extra rewards on top every few points, so totally worth checking as well. But now that you've got these items, it's time to go for a really amazing early on set called the Glide Armor. This gives you a massive boost to skydive mobility, which lets you take control over Link a lot easier when falling. So to get this, you need three specific pieces from islands up into the sky that you reach via these sky towers. So the first one is the Lindersbro Skyview Tower, and you find this in the Hyrule Ridge zone to the west. Reaching it is easy, you can either build a bridge over the water and then use a sand to reach the top, or use a pine cone and some fire to glide via a wind gust. Once you launch from the tower, you'll want to take a look to the spiraling ruins onto your left side. You'll want to basically aim at the island with the pond that's at the bottom of the spiraling ruins. Pretty much all islands with the remaining challenges will look exactly like this and you will want to land on them. There's also a shrine you can activate at all times, so this is something that you can use later on to fast travel should you want to. From this point on, simply talk to the construct and start the skydive challenge. This puts you at the top of the ruins and you can then just dive through these checkpoints to reach the pond below in under 35 seconds. Completing this with a good timer already gives you the glide shirt that you can equip right away and already get the boost going. The second one is for the mask and you'll get these from the islands above the Mount Lanairu Tower in the mountain region right here to the east. You'll have to reach this island right here to your right but you can also make a quick stop and use the smaller one to the right side next to it. So as you fall, once again, take a look at the giant spiraling ruins and aim for the island with the pond at the bottom. Like I said, if that's too far from you, just drop on the smaller one as there's gonna be a fully constructed flying vehicle that you can grab from here. With this, you can then just make your way directly to the island and once again activate the fast travel point, just in case something bad happens. From here, you need to complete a similar skydive challenge, so just talk to the NPC and once again try to do it in under 35 seconds. This might be a bit more difficult since the visibility here is worse, but it should take you no more than 25 seconds to complete it. And once you've done so, you can just talk to the construct and they will give you the glide mask right away. Oh, and by the way, if you have broken any records during these moments, you will also get some bonus large Zonai charges. 
The third and final one is going to be the Typhlo Ruins Tower all the way up north in the Great Hyrule Forest. Solving this one is also easy, you just need to clear the floating device from the top of the tower. You can easily do so by using the other platforms and the rockets provided to reach up and then just move it with your ultra hand. But once you're up in the sky, you will want to take a look south at the spiraling ruins in the area. Except that to reach the platform with the pond, you will first need to land on this floating island closer to you with a launching pad in the middle. So try to land there and once you're done, use the mechanism to move the launch pad so that it makes the device face south. From here, jump on it and try to go as far as you can until you reach the top of the island with the pond below. The process from here is exactly the same as always, talk to the NPC, finish the challenge and you're pretty much done with it. The only trickier part is that these checkpoints are now gonna be moving a bit, so just be careful with that. Otherwise, once you're done, congrats, you just got the full gliding set with the pants being the final piece and it looks really awesome in my opinion, plus it's going to make it easier to avoid some of the obstacles up in the sky. Moving on to number 4, it's time we talk about weapons and one super early you can get is the Topaz Rod. I really like this one because it's easily available from an early electric wizard drop enemy and it comes with a unique power that launches orbs of electricity with each attack. You can find one in the canyon right next to the serene stables on this side of the map. It's a single enemy you can take on quickly and it spawns often plus it always drops that weapon. I'm not gonna lie, it kinda makes you feel like Thor a bit, constantly being able to shock enemies with almost all the hits. It's actually absurdly powerful if it happens to also rain outside since its small shock turns into a large scale AoE that can take an entire group at the same time. Best thing is that this doesn't just stun lock enemies but also makes them drop their weapons and even shields once electrocuted. So you can literally disarm a huge boss and stun lock them like there is nothing. Keep in mind that after 4 or 5 hits you will get a short cooldown before the orbs yeah, get to spawn again but it doesn't take too long and you can still use the weapon the normal way. Anyway this brings us to the final unlock I recommend which is gonna be the auto construct. Best thing is that you can access this the normal way via a quest chain early that also provides access to the photo mode, another power for the slate but I'm gonna show you a quick skip at the end to completely bypass all of that. So the first mission in the chain is going to be the camera work in the depths which you start right here after you've got the regional phenomena main quest. Specifically you have to talk to Joshua and Robbie back at the lookout landing camp in the middle of the map. This is one of the first quests to bring you into the underworld just below Hyrule which you can access from all these craters all around the upper map. This one is easy, you just have to follow the main objectives, unlock these light routes all the way until you reach Robbie and then unlock the camera to take a photo for him. Once you're done with that, you're pretty much done with the quest and there's one thing remaining which is gonna be the next quest in the sequence. It's called Mystery in the Depths and you can start this a bit later by talking to Joshua once again back at the main camp. Now she's going to tell you to go back on the same path as before and continue down south until you reach this region right here of the abandoned mines in the south of the depths. Once at the abandoned mines you will find these ruins with the checkpoints in the middle and once you interact with that checkpoint you will get the auto construct power. There's of course going to be an extra challenge for you in there that you have to complete first but it's easy and fast to do so. And now that you've got the auto construct this is going to save you so much time because it basically saves any of your past designs so you don't have to build them from the ground up once again. So you build a cool contraption or an awesome vehicle with a lot of parts well that's gonna be saved and you can quickly build that or just create it out of the blue with this ability. Of course you don't always have to use the parts, you can also just use the Zonai crystals that you get in the depths area anyway as they are quite abundant. Furthermore you can find schematics that come with specific constructs you might not have yet so this is such a quality of life change and gives you so many advantages especially as you progress more in the game. But as I've said, there's one final way you can skip all of these quests entirely and go straight for the auto construct as if none of the quests even matter. So I'll give a big shout out to Somewhat Awesome Games for being the first to discover this. But if you head directly to the pit in the Eastern Abbey right here on this side of the map, 
very close to where you start the game actually, you can go almost directly to the abandoned mines and get it right away. So simply dive through that chasm and once at the bottom, take a look around as there's gonna be a partial building with some rails, carts and various devices. From this point on, you can just slap these two fans on the cart, place it on the rail and then just let it take you via the path to the destination. No need to do anything during this moment, the game just brings you to that location, to the abandoned mines, and once here you can basically just grab it the usual as you did for the mission. Heck, you can even later tell Joshua that you've already been here and this is going to immediately complete that quest for her too. So yeah, this is pretty much it with some of the biggest early unlocks you should get. Totally stay tuned if you want to see more of these guides for The Legend of Zelda, Tears of the Kingdom, and I'll see you guys in the next video.